Kaiju, I should turn off this music. Ladies, gentlemen, robots, kaiju, cats, dogs, bugs, butterflies, potatoes, and ice cream sundaes. Welcome one and all. We're here for 100 days of making comics. I'm Gazbot, your venerable host, and this is the mighty day 68. Yes, the mighty day 68. We're almost at 70 days. That's crazy town. Uh, it, it's always like, I've talked about this before, other people doing D100s have talked about it before. It's sort of a mixed uh, emotion of excitement of, oh my gosh, I'm getting so close to the end. And, oh my gosh, I have so little done compared to what I thought I'd have done. Uh, and relating to that, I did about an hour and 15 today. Uh, that was just now. It's like midnight-ish. Uh, once again, friends are over. But this time, I was uh, squirreling myself away in the office while they played a game. Hung out a little bit, but... Um, most of the day I had worked on some coloring for the Earthling pages, then I went for another bike ride, because you know what? I like bike rides, and I deserve it. And I went to the comic store, and Black Science trade paperback number two came out, which is very exciting to me. Black Science is one of my favorite comics right now. It, it's, uh, it's pretty fun, uh, and I'm only reading the trades, so I've been waiting a while for that. Anyway, I got that and some other comics, rode my bike around like crazy, and then came home and had some people and that kind of stuff. Came in here, did an hour 15 on the horror, did do a process video actually. It's not super exciting. Uh, still working on the rough uh, layouts, well the layout roughs, whatever, the, the, the page, you know what I'm doing. For page eight, uh, it's not done, but it's pretty close now. Uh, I'll go ahead and throw a process in the face. So continuing the layouts for page eight, uh, I realized that the bubbles I had done were on the rough layer and I messed around with that. Uh, first thing I did was panel 4 I knew was going to be a problem even when I did the thumbnail. So I started messing with that then said, no, nah, let me do panel 5. Uh, the three bottom panels, um, I, I pretty much didn't change too much from the rough thumbnails. Uh, I changed the position a little bit, but I don't even consider what I'm doing here the final roughs. I mean, I guess they are the final roughs, but I've been doing my roughs tighter, so you know, I know I'm going to go back and tighten them up tomorrow probably, but I was just so intimidated to do that third panel that I did these because I knew it would be a little easier and i keep it a little looser. Uh, and I know some artists, when they're working on a page, will do the hardest panel first. A lot recommend it because then you get tired later and you can do the easy, fun stuff. And that's generally good advice, uh, and I would agree to it. Except when I'm already tired or already frustrated or just feeling intimidated, like in this case, I feel that it's better to work on something else first to get your confidence up and just... Let's say I was like, I can't do it. At least I got something done today rather than struggle with a panel and maybe not get anything done. Um, but I did put in a rough there, as you could see. And then I also decided I wanted to change panel four with the running. Uh, I thought I might redraw them completely. 
I also then looked at three and thought she should be looking uh, up into her right a little bit more since that's where he'd be standing. Then I went back to four. Man, I was jumping around a lot on this page. Uh, but I basically kept the same pose but flipped him and moved his boot out to be bigger. Uh, and just, it, it looks like he's moving the action into the page again. And again, talking about the flow of the page, since his boot's going in, his whole body's going in, it, instead of leading our eye out of the page, it's leading it back in the page, and the boot is like directly pointing to the next panel. I change his back foot a little bit. Uh, and that panel is done, you know, as it's going to be at this phase anyway. Now, panel four, the roughs are pretty okay at this point, but because it's a weird perspective, and it's not that weird, it's a perspective I don't normally do. It's it's very basic, it's sort of like a slightly down shot of, you know, a street with some buildings and stuff, but because I know perspective is a weak point uh, with me, even in the rough phase, I like to try to figure stuff out. Um, not so much, hey, what building's going to be here, and how does the sidewalk look, but just kind of the structure of the way it's going to work. Uh, and it's tedious and I hate it, but I hate it more if I don't do it and then it looks wrong. And sometimes I do this and it still looks wrong, but then I at least have the satisfaction of knowing I tried my best. Uh, I don't mind failing if I tried my best, but uh, if I know that I didn't do my best, uh, it, it drives me insane. If I did my best, uh, it won't drive me insane for, you know, a day, a week, a year longer. <laughs> Eventually I, I'll hate all my artwork, as I think most artists do. Um, but if I put in this work, like I said, I feel a little bit better about myself. And it's also a learning experience that I may or may not nail this uh, the way I wanted to. I may, may or may not nail this in terms of technical uh, accuracy. But every time I try to do something like this, it increases my understanding, it increases my experience level, and the next time I do it, it'll be a little easier and come out a little bit better. So that's what I try to tell myself every time I do something that I find difficult or that I don't like the way it's coming out, uh, that, you know, Worst case scenario, it'll be easier and better next time. Yeah, this is very tedious. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about something else while we watch this. What am I going to talk about? My cat is sitting next to me, and uh, he's a fuzzy guy. I enjoy him. He's my work buddy. He pretty much just sleeps next to me, but that's that's good, especially when it's like 2 in the morning and I'm feeling lonely. Uh, and like the world is dead. Although that is a good time for me to work in the middle of the night. Uh, I find I do a lot better because no one's around to distract me. There's no emails coming in. Nobody's going to call. I don't look out the window and think I should go for a bike ride or something. It's sort of like, hey, I'm awake. I could be watching TV or doing this. And I, I feel guilty if I watch TV, so I do this. Um, actually, th this panel came out okay. Um, the perspective isn't as dynamic as I'd like it to be. Um, and, and as the type of panel it is, it's a little bit bland. I mean, it's not completely stiff and static, but I was hoping for something a little more dynamic. But again, I, I more and more try to go with clarity of storytelling and accuracy of, of draftsmanship. So if I tried to get more dynamic, it might have got confusing or it might have been more inaccurate. And I try to hold myself back from the excess until... Uh, I've mastered the basics, which is a weird thing to say at this point in my career that I haven't mastered the basics, but I, I don't know. I mean, I guess people do eventually master the basics, but I, I feel like I never will. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I guess it's good to acknowledge it. Hey, look, I'm looking at music. Why is that there? I don't know. Um, but I wanted this to be a beat up old neighborhood. So one thing I've been trying to be cognizant of when I when I draw stuff in perspective, I tend to use uh, digital tools to get straight lines so that the perspective lines are correct. But that gives it a very artificial flat line. Uh, and sometimes I correct in the inks, but sometimes I forget. And in this neighborhood, especially, it's an old rundown neighborhood with like cracking sidewalks and potholes. And like I drew an awning here, and then I was like, oh, there should be a hole in the awning, so I put a little hole. And later, I think I put a big hole. And so even in this phase, I'm trying to just show everything's run down and beat up and basically like just the the city and the government haven't put any money into repairing and it's just falling apart because of age um, so even though I'm doing these super straight lines with the um, tools in Photoshop I then go in and like make a little race and marks and adjustments to, to make it less perfect yeah there's the big hole I put in where you could like see the sidewalk through it most of the time I spent today it was about an hour 15 and most of it was on this panel uh, and this is the kind of panel I dread, you know. This is the kind of panel that'll make a page roughs go from a half hour, an hour, to like two hours. Or same thing when I'm doing finals or inks. It could take a page that maybe I could have knocked out in six hours and all of a sudden it's a ten-hour pa page. Um, and I, the only thing I could hope is that with time that gets better. If If the time got better, that would be good. If the finished product got better, that would be better. And if both got better, that's, I mean, that's the goal of every artist, I'm sure, to be faster and better. 
what's the old saying? First you get good, then you get fast, then you get fast and good. I think that's how it goes. But anyway, w whatever the actual quote is, I, I misquote stuff a lot, but uh, I always took the intent to be that it's sort of cyclical because at least that's what I found in my career. Here I am just redrawing their poses a little bit and I mucked around with her again because it's a weird sort of angle that I don't normally do. But uh, at least in my career, I find that I'm always hitting plateaus of like, okay, I kind of know what I'm doing and I'm doing, I could knock this stuff out next amount of time without too much effort. And then I'll go, oh, well, wait, suddenly I understand anatomy a little bit better. Or wait, uh, suddenly I understand perspective or, you, you know, shading, it comes to me in a different way now. And I'll see my work get better. And it's always a weird thing where I'll do like 10 drawings and one of them will for some reason be way better than the others. And then over the course of the next six months to a year, all of my drawings will be as good as that one outlier. So all of my, you know, art gets raised up a skill level. Oh, here I wanted to put sp spotlights to kind of make dramatic lighting and also highlight the two figures in a kind of oddly cluttered scene for such an open road because of all the, the debris and stuff. Uh, but anyway, in the meantime, when my level of art is like rising that way, I find that my speed drops because now I'm doing better, but I'm putting more work in and trying different concepts. So everything slows down. And then eventually I catch up and my speed catches up and that kind of becomes the new norm. But then I'll get a little better. And so, you know, it is a constant thing of... Uh, improving and slowing down and then speeding back up and improving and slowing down which I don't know if that's true for all artists and I don't know if, if it goes away at some point uh, part of me hopes it does, part of me hopes it doesn't because I always want to be improving but it would be nice to get to the point where it wasn't such a dramatic improvement all the time and it wasn't such a time sink every time I discovered a new thing I wanted to do but I've been talking a lot about not what I'm drawing mainly because I drew that one panel for so long so here we go, that's where we're at Okay, so that was there. Uh, and like I said, I went for bike ride, which is what that little jam in the beginning was. Uh, and that was uh, from my GoPro 4. The last time I think I put one of those up, it was my GoPro 3. Uh, and I also had it on like a head mount, or maybe it was my GoPro 4, but I had it on a head mount. This time I had it on a handlebar mount, just testing it out, and it gives me some B-roll to show to you suckers. But that's that. Um, the other thing that happened today is a, uh, an acquaintance an internet friend, a like-minded individual, uh, had sent me this, which uh, he had bought, uh, his name is Josh B. He, he runs Collection DX, put a link below. Uh, actually, I can put a link to his channel here. I've done a couple of reviews for their site, uh, and I actually did a video that's linked to theirs for a Power Rangers Jungle Fury figure. Um, they do mostly Japanese toys. But anyway, he had done a review of this, which is uh, an Ultraman vehicle set of diff all the different Ultraman. Although I think it's telling that right here, this is the American Ultraman. Uh, Ultraman, Ultraman the Ultimate Hero in Japan, he was called uh, Uru Toroman Powado, Powered, to differentiate him from the others. He's the only Ultraman with blue eyes, and I'm a big fan just because he's American, and, you know, like, that tickles me that we have an American Ultraman. But anyway, this is different. Uh, there's a figure of him, which is kind of terrible, but I have a good figure of him. And then there's a bunch of different uh, vehicles from through the series. And it's from Japan, but he got it at a thrift store for, uh, I think he said 10 bucks. And what makes him awesome, and like a great person in the collector community, is I had commented and said, man, i got to check eBay because I'd like to get a set like that. And he contacted me privately. He's like, hey, man, I'll give it to you for it. I paid for it. Just pay me some shipping. And I was like, all right, brother. That's cool. And that's, you know, that's the way to do things. And I really appreciated that. Now i got a fun little thing that I'll take apart. I Maybe I'll do my own video. Who knows? But uh, what I definitely will do is put it in my display case with my ultra men and, well, just men. I have no ladies. There's only one, two, two ladies, but they're exclusives and they're expensive and it doesn't matter. Uh, that was day 68. Uh... And that means... It's a tabemaska. It's a tabemaska. It's a tabemaska. We've got 32 days left! Atto de. Atto de.